to virtual story time. This week we are talking about wildlife and that encompasses a lot of different kinds of animals depending on where you live. So we're going to talk about quite a few different things and have a really wild and wooly puppet show for you. Yep, so stay tuned. Bye. Bye. Okay, so our first book this week, we're talking about wildlife. It's called Wild About Books. So let's find out what's going on in here. It started in the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer, and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. It's a lot of animals. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Look at all of them, they're coming for all the books. Forsaking their niches, their nests and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books while geckos could only stick to the wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Oh, what are the raccoons reading? Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes and howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as why were the bandicoots books overdue? Uh-oh. Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictors squeeze cricked or too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up the goodnight moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. Oh no, that's not how you treat books, right? And Bear's Love of Books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off of the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. That's handy. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. Uh-oh. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a gnu to build a branch library there at the zoo. When the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check out the books, we can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoo brary. Hip, hip, hooray. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. The end. And I'm going to...
read you a book that you may know called Over in the Meadow. It's also a song, but I will spare you from having to hear me sing it. So we're just gonna read it. Over in the meadow, in the sand, in the sun, lived a bumpy mother toad and her little toady one. Wink, said the mother. I wink, said the one. Can you wink? It's when you just blink one eye. Can you do it? So they winked and they blinked in the sand, in the sun. What does a toad say? Do you know? They go, ribbit. Over in the meadow where the sky gleams blue lived a woolly mother sheep and her little lammies too. Ba said the mother. We ba said the two. So they baaed and they ran where the sky gleams blue. Over in the meadow in a hole in a tree lived a smooth mother robin and her little robins three. Sing, said the mother. We sing, said the three. Can you sing? Can you go la la la? So they sang and they chirped in a hole in the, up the tree. Over in the meadow, in the reeds on the shore, lived a spiky mother muskrat and her little muskrats, four. Dive, said the mother. We dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. Over in the meadow in a snug beehive lived a fu fuzzy mother bee and her little bees five. What does a bee say? You know, they go bzzz. Buzz, said the mother. We buzz, said the five. So they buzzed and they hummed in the snug beehive. Over in the meadow in a nest built of sticks lived a shiny mother crow and her little crows six. Caw, said the mother. We caw, said the six. So they cawed and they called in their nest built of sticks. Over in the meadow where the grass is so even lived a furry mother mouse and her little mousies seven. Squeak, said the mother. We squeak, said the seven. So they squeaked and they sniffed in the grass soft and even. Over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a scaly mother lizard and her little lizards eight. Bask, said the mother. We bask, said the eight. So they basked in the sun by the old mossy gate. Over in the meadow where the stream water shines lived a slippery mother fish and her little fishies nine. Swim, said the mother. We swim, said the nine. So they swam and they left where the stream water shines. Over in the meadow in a sly little den lived a hairy mother spider and her little spiders ten. Spin, said the mother. We spin, said the ten. So they spun lacy webs in their sly little den. The end. Now just for fun, how about we practice counting? This is something that we do at story time. So let's count to ten together, all right? We'll go one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job, everyone. The high rocky hill baked under the hot sun. Wild, a mountain sheep who lived on the high rocky hill, baked too, from hoof to head. The grassy field below baked under the hot sun. Wooly, a ranch sheep who lived on the grassy field, baked too, from head to hoof. Wild noticed the shade of woods below him. Trot, trot, trot. Down to the shady woods he walked. Wooly noticed the shade of the woods above him. Plod, plod, plod. Up to the shady woods he climbed. Wild saw Wooly on the path in the shady woods. Snort, said Wild. You are a curious animal. I've never met anyone like you. Bat, said Wooly. I am Wooly. I am a sheep. A sheep, snorted Wild. He looked at Wooly, hoof to head. You don't look like the sheep I know. Where is your brown coat? Where are your horns? I don't know, said Wooly, but I am a sheep. I live on the grassy field. Wooly pointed down to his grassy field. Hmm, said Wild. This is curious. You are curious, said Wooly. I've never met anyone like you either. 
What are you? I am wild, said Wild. I am a sheep. A sheep? asked Wooly. You don't look like the sheep I know. Where are your fat legs? Where is your curly wool? Wooly shook his woolly ears. Flippity flap. I don't know, said Wild, but I am a sheep. I live on the high rocky hill. Wild pointed up to the high rocky hill. Hmm, said Wooly. This is curious. Why don't you come and see my grassy field? It has everything a sheep could want, offered Wooly. I will, said Wild. Wooly led Wild down to the grassy field. Plod, plod, plod. Trot, trot, trot. This is it, said Wooly, rolling and wriggling in the grass. Wild looked around. There are no bulging boulders to hide behind. No, said Wooly, just grass. You are too woolly to hide in the grass, said Wild. But, asked Wooly, why would I hide? Because of hungry wolves, and <gasps> Wild's eyes popped open wide. A low, dark shape ran toward them across the grassy field. Wild pointed behind Wooly. Behind you! Run, Wooly, run! shouted Wild. Wild ran fast. Trot, trot, trot. Wooly tried to run fast. Plod, plod, plod. What is behind me? shouted Wooly. A wolf! answered Wild. A wolf behind me? Oh my! Blah. Wooly tried to move his legs faster. He is right beside you, shouted Wild. Wild po pointed beside Wooly. Wooly looked and stopped. So did the low, dark animal. Stop, Wild, panted Wooly. This isn't a wolf. This is a dog. A dog? Wild snorted and stamped his hooves. What is a dog? I am a dog. Woof, woof, said the dog. Wild saw many sharp teeth twinkling, twinkling inside the dog's woof. Wild shook his head. Whoosh, whoosh. Wait, said Wooly. He stepped between them. Stop! And they stopped. A dog keeps us safe from the wolf, said Wooly. This is my friend, Picket. Picket, this is Wild. He is visiting the grassy field. Wild thought you were a wolf. A wolf? Hardy arf arf, laughed Picket. How could you mistake me for a wolf? A wolf has sharp teeth and a long tail. A wolf, hardy arf arf. Wild looked at Picket's sharp teeth and long tail. My mistake, said Wild as he rolled his eyes. Picket sniffed Wild. I've never smelled anyone like you. Wild rolled his eyes again. I am a sheep. He snorted. Whoosh, whoosh. You don't look like the sheep I know, said Picket. Are you a distant cousin? Not too distant, said Wooly. He lives on that high rocky hill. Wild and Wooly pointed to the high rocky hill. Nice to meet you, big fella, said Picket. Picket turned to Wooly. So long, little buddy. He gave Wooly a long, wet lick. Bah, that tickles. Wooly shook his woolly ears. Flippity flap. So long, Wild. Picket gave Wild a lick too. Hardy arf arf. Then ran across the field. Race, race, race. Wild wiped his face with his hoof. The grassy field is not the place for me. But smell the haystack, said Wooly, and see the pretty green grass that goes on and on. The grassy field has everything a sheep could want. Not this sheep, said Wild. I should head home. Oh, said Wooly. Come with me, offered Wild. Come visit my home on the high rocky hill. It really has everything a sheep could want. I will, said Wooly. His eyes looked across the flat grassy field and up, up, up to the high rocky hill. He sighed. <sighs> Wild led Wooly through the shady woods, up the high rocky hill, Wild tramped. Up the high rocky hill, Wooly trudged. Trot, 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 plod, plod, plod. They walked through the fragrant balsams. Wooly sneezed. Achoo! They climbed steep cliffs. Wooly wheezed. Are we there yet? panted Wooly. No, said Wild, not yet. 
They hurdled fallen logs. Wooly huffed. They hiked around bulging boulders. Wooly puffed. Are we there yet? Panted Wooly. No, not yet. They ducked under low branches. Wooly dipped. They sloshed through muddy puddles. Wooly slipped. Trot, trot, trot. Plod, plod, plod. Finally, Wild said, here we are. Plat. This is very high and very rocky home. Wooly looked at his hooves, and very earthy, too. Wooly lifted each hoof and shook off mud and leaves and needles. Where is your water tank? Follow me, said Wild. Wild led the way through clumpy bushes to a small pool near the edge of the cliff. Wooly tried to follow Wild. He pushed and pulled and pulled and pushed, but his curly wool was caught in the clumpy bushes. I am stuck, shouted Wooly. He began to cry. I will never see my grassy home again. You can see it right now, said Wild. He pointed over the cliff's edge to the grassy field below. It's right there, Wooly said, looking down, down, down to the grassy field. He bawled. Wild sighed. I will help. Wild nod sticks here. Wild nod sticks there. He snipped above Wooly and he snipped below Wooly. He trimmed Wooly's left side. He trimmed Wooly's right side. With a big grunt, uh, Wooly wriggled free. He looked into the small pond. My curly wool, I look like a porcupine. The high rocky hill is not the place for me. But smell the balsam, said Wild, and see the mountaintops that go on and on. The high rocky hill has something every sheep could want. Not this sheep, said Wooly. I should go home. Oh, said Wild. Wild helped Wooly down the high, rocky hill to the shady woods below. They stopped on the path. Wooly looked at Wild. Wild looked at Willie. Wild smiled. So, Wooly, how was your day? He teased. How was yours? Wooly teased back. He smiled at Wild. The two smiles turned into two grins. The two grins turned into big laughs. <laughs> they laughed. They laughed and laughed until their eyes filled with laughing tears. Wild wiped his eyes. Tomorrow? Wooly wiped his eyes in the woods. Whoosh, whoosh, flippity flap. That night, the air was cool and sweet. Wild settled down by his bulging boulder. Wooly settled by his haystack. They both fell asleep, counting sheep. The end. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this virtual story time. Yes, absolutely. There's lots of really cool wild animals out there for us to learn about, and we have books about all of them. So if you thought of a really cool animal out there in wildlife you want to learn more about, just call us up or put some things on hold, and we will get all those books ready for you, along with a really cool wild craft. Exactly. So uh, we are open for express service at this time. You're welcome to come in and grab those books yourself or grab that craft yourself. But we are also still offering our curbside service if you would rather not come in the building. So if that's the case, give us a call. We will grab all those books and a craft for you. So thank you so much and we will see you next time. Bye.